Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I just wanted to do a quick video just to show you my split charge system. I've mentioned it a few times in my previous videos, which you can check out here or here. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you the... Whoa, okay, first of all, two things. One is, apologies for the quality of the video. Um, I don't know what was going on with my camera. I don't think I quite had the right settings, so it was going in and out of focus. Number two, probably need to explain what a split charge system is. So, but just before we get into the full vlog, the idea is, is that when you turn the ignition on the engine, it powers the starter battery. The starter battery then charges the leisure battery, and you have a split charge relay, which allows the power to transfer from the starter battery into that leisure battery. And then when you turn the engine off, the split charge relay stops any charge from the leisure battery going back to the starter battery, effectively draining the starter battery, and if you were running off it for a couple of days, you might not be able to start the engine of the van. Then from the leisure battery, once you're parked up for somewhere for the night, it means that all of your electrics can be powered just off the leisure battery and not drain the starter battery. So that's basically what a split charge system is. The rest of it is all of uh, the ancillary extras, such as your lights and your fridge, your water pump, all of those bits and pieces. There are also some extras that need to be powered off three pin sockets, um, such as hair dryers, kettles, that kind of thing. Uh, that is separate to the split charge system, but you can also set up, and the way that I've done it, is that it will charge the leisure battery. Anyway, that's the preamble. Let's get on with the vlog. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you the, um, how I've set it up, because it's not how a lot of people tend to do it. Um, and I've located the battery in the far back corner. A lot of people tend to do it underneath the driver's seat, which was my original plan. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get to it. Uh, first of all, gonna pop the bonnet. And uh, let's go have a look. Okay, here we go. So, just above the battery, we've got the, uh, this is the power cable. And it goes, I think it's around about 250 mil, which goes into a little fuse. I think it's a 100 amp fuse I've put in there, right there. We've also got the 240 volt hookup out. Let's get that in focus. Now with this, I uh, decided to mount it on the underside of this particular plate here. Now, probably should have uh, unbolted this, but effectively both positive terminal for the leisure battery and the 240 volt cable they basically run down the back of this like a loom I don't know if you can just see them there's a loom in there and you can poke it up through an existing hole in the tray and then that will run through into yeah, you can't see that but around about here uh, in the in the firewall of the, the van, there's another little rubber grommet uh, where the cables. Uh, there's actually nothing in there, but you can cut a hole through that little grommet and then poke both the cables through, and that takes you straight into the back of the glove box. So, really simple. I thought this is the best place to put it. It means that when we get to campsite, we can literally just um, open this up, plug it in. You can have the cable dangling out of the bonnet, and around the bonnet still closes. With the cable still attached and it just keeps it all neat and tidy and means that this isn't open to the elements and it's going to get covered in rubbish a lot of people have them sort of dangling um, behind the vans uh, so yeah moving around so in the glove box let's get to this out i've kept it purposely easy to remove see if we can have a look down here uh, there you can just see the blue cable coming out and that is where the little rubber grommet is and um, so that blue cable is the 240 volt it's Arctic cable um, which is just a bit better uh, particularly for adjusting temperatures but yeah those are uh, those power cables basically carry in through the back there. 
as you can see here I've also got various other looms and um, this is these are the speaker cables and reversing camera cables they're all sort of wired into the back of the head unit there so at this point the 240 volt and the laser battery power basically run up the A pillar up and over this head trim and then come back out here now I've put in some uh, some ducting just to keep everything uh, super kind of uh, secure and tidy and um, yeah that was the best way to do it and that basically runs all the way down to the far end of the van just to have a look in here <clears throat> right so here you can get a better view we've got uh, that's the Arctic cable we've got the leisure battery cable inside there as well as a few other cables Light's pretty bad in here. And that runs all the way through into my very dodgy built cabinet at the moment. And basically it comes out here. So the cable comes out, it goes into the, uh, the split charge relay, and then into the battery. We've got earthing point, which goes into the bus bar there, and the bus bar connects to the earthing point on the chassis, which is um, just in there. We've then got the fuse box here, and um, that's got a, a separate uh, fuse on it um, from the positive terminal of the battery. And this will be this is what's basically powering the um, the control unit and all the fuses. Sorry, not the USBs. So we're also going to have in here, you know, like a timbre door here, you have the 240 volt consumer unit, a socket, and then a battery charger, which will power the battery when we're on electrical hookup. And that's what these cables here are for. Got an earth, and then the, and the more Arctic cable there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It means that everything is actually really nicely self-contained in this wardrobe. It means we can have the control panel here. And then, oh, excuse all the paint, by the way, on my hands. I've been doing some painting today. And then, yeah, two sockets here, which will be right above the kitchen unit, which will come all the way across. And uh, it just means that all can, all the electrics just kind of stored all in one place. We don't have a battery underneath the driver's seat and then control panel somewhere else. Everything is in here. So if I ever need to access it, I, it should be really easy. Just open up the timbre door or even remove the wardrobe all completely together. And um, there's very little cabling sort of up in this upper section. There's a little bit in here, but it's all gonna be sort of, again, in this back quarter panel. So then off the fuse box, we have got USB sockets. So cables, oh, what is this focus? But cables are running up in that rear quarter. They run all the way along. And down we've got USB and a 12 volt here. And they're already working, as you can see. And we've got another one. So there's a cable that then piggybacks off that all the way over to here. And that's our second 12 volt socket. That's just, you know, easy for the kids if they want to charge iPads and all that kind of stuff. But again, all the cabling always runs horizontal. Um, nothing going across sways or, um, you know, behind panels, just, just in case, it's just really for safety. So, <clears throat> what else have we got that's going to be running off the fuses? Okay, so yeah, we're going to have this light up here. This will actually be changed. This will be an under, there'll be a shelf here and there'll be an LED light, which is um, touch, uh, you can touch it here and it's dimmable and all that kind of stuff. So that's also running off the fuse down to there and obviously we've got the control panel which will be running off the fuse box and then from control panel we're gonna have I think four yeah four switches and the fifth one is a spare so the four switches are we've got main lights which I'll come on to a halo light um, 
I think a water pump and then kitchen plinth lights. So the main lights basically come off the control panel up and there's a, this line here, a bit of a daisy chained all the way along to there and we'll have one, two, and then we've also tapped into it, run all the way around and all the way over to that side. There'll be one, two, three, four. So six lights in total, all running off the main light switch. And there'll be circular LEDs, which will be installed inside the, the pop top. Then got the halo light, which will run up and that will come out here. You can see, so neatly uh, written there. So the halo light will be a big sort of LED circular light which will sit underneath the bedboard of the pop top that's going to look sweet uh this one what did i say it was going to be uh the water pump yeah obviously so that will that will just come straight out somewhere probably behind here and then feed the water pump eventually when we put a sink in here and then finally the led plinth light so again that will probably come down the back out and then there'll be one two three four plinth lights just on this section here just for a bit of show. And then, yeah, the fifth one is just a spare. If we ever want to add something, um, maybe like a diesel heater later on, so we can run a cable down around the back, um, probably underneath the step, and then put the diesel heater underneath the driver's seat. Again, another reason why the battery's at the back, and then um, just makes everything a lot easier. So yeah, that is our, or oh, the split charge system that we've installed into this van um, tomorrow i am dropping off the van at bespoke buses and they will be completing the rest of this conversion and uh so the next time you see it actually a lot of this cable you, you're not going to see i'm never going to see it again because it's all going to be hidden away in all the sort of the aluminium chassis of the pop top which is why i kind of just wanted to video it now just for uh, just for the record i forgot to mention these are the um these are the actual cables that are going to be going into the control unit. So this lot is actually, as my arrow, it's all going to be moved back into there. And then the only thing we've got coming out this side is this little loom, which um, powers the step light when the sliding door is open. So yeah, that's that's it. Really quick, simple vlog today. Um, tomorrow, dropping the van off, and um, I'll do. A separate update vlog once all that is done but very exciting so if you haven't already subscribe like that little dingly button and stay tuned for more boom